Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, episode number 181. This is our midweek supplemental. I'm your host, Bob DeMarco. And uh, this week, we're talking about recurves. I want you to open your mind to the power of the recurve. Uh, a lot of people appreciate the beauty and the design of recurve blades, but they get turned off by uh, feelings of inadequacy when it comes to sharpening them. Uh, you know, it, it, it does present a problem, perhaps, if you're sharpening a uh, recurve blade on a big flat stone. Who knows? Maybe some of our friends who sharpen steel and sharpen blades can tell us. But uh, there are a couple of simple steps you can take to uh, sharpen those recurve blades and you get all of the benefit of a recurve. The beauty, the power of a recurve. So we're going to talk about that later. First, we're going to talk about the state of the collection, uh, talk about some new knives uh, or, or one new knife. And, and this will open up the floor to show my custom sub collection, which is four knives strong now. Uh, I had the uh, I had the pleasure this weekend, uh, this past Sunday of speaking with uh, the, the last person whose custom knife I bought, Ken Vihikite and uh, Black Rock Knives. So I'll be showing that off. And uh, one knife, a new knife drop that is really cool uh, from the uh, one of the guests on our show, Ostop Hell. We're going to be showing his new knife. And then all about recurves. So uh, let's get into a pocket check first, just to, you know, break the ice and warm up and to show off uh, two extra knives. Uh, so today I'm carrying my much loved and uh, difficult to acquire uh, Les George VSEP. Or VECP. I think it's called the VSEP. I think that's what he calls it. Uh, Les George has uh, just, he's been designing knives for quite a bit of time and not just designing them, building them. He uh, made this VSEP and sort of pioneered the concept of the mid tech knife uh, in the early 2000s, uh, I think 2005 or so. And uh, it's gone through four iterations. Now he's making flipper versions of this knife, but this is the version I like best. I found it uh, online on uh, blade forums uh, from a guy in Singapore and I bought it from him before I knew he was in Singapore. Waited a long time to get this knife. I love it. We're going to be speaking with uh, Les George uh, coming up here real shortly, real soon. I mean, not today, uh, but uh, on one of your uh, near future uh, interview shows. Also in my left pocket today, uh, nestled between my Fisher Space Pen and Flashlight is uh, is the GEC-14. Yes, just another opportunity to show off my new GEC-47. Uh, I said 14. <laughs> well, they should make a 14, but this is the 47. Uh, beautiful swayback in black plum bone with the jigging and, that, uh, and a nice uh, shield that looks kind of like, I don't know, like an interstate badge or a police badge or something. I love that this knife has the uh, lanyard hole and a decent size at three inches, a pretty big slip joint knife. So that's what's in my pocket today. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm trying not to use the word blessed when it's something as simple as uh, having knives, but uh, I am in, uh, I, I'm very fortunate to, to have these knives and um, well, I just, Wanted to share the love. Uh, we have a listener line, 724-466-4487. I would love you to call it. Tell me what uh, what you're carrying and uh, what knives you love. And, you know, just kind of if you have something on your mind, uh, call that line. One thing I do want to mention, though, is that it is not a line to get in touch with any of our guests. Uh, I've had a couple of people, you know, just by accident, uh, reach out and 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 uh you know, because they had changes on orders with a custom knife maker or something like that. Or uh, one guy wanted me to heat treat his his blade. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure you don't want me to do that. Uh, so they just dialed, uh, you know, got the wrong number. So I reach out to them, of course, and direct them in the in the in the correct direction. But just so you know, listener line is for you to leave messages for me and uh, and me and Jim. Tell us what you think or you know whatever's on your mind. Uh, but it's not a way to reach out to these makers, unfortunately. So uh, there you have it. Let's move on to the state of the collection because I just can't wait to show off these custom knives. Firstly, well, I'll save firstly for lastly. So these are knives you've seen before. Uh, so th this, these are my four custom 
custom knives. I'm going to put them in front of the knife cam. And uh, I, I just want to catalog them because yesterday, uh, well, two days ago, I got my fourth. And the feeling of getting a handmade custom knife is, uh, I don't know, it's, it's, it's frightfully exhilarating. Here you go. Okay, the first one is the A2D fighter, the attention to detail fighter. That's Douglas Esposito. Uh, you can catch a couple of interviews with him on this show in beautiful tortoise shell with brass liners. I mean, is that not class? Look at that jimping. The jimping is uh, very generously scooped out of the spine. The spine is uh, rounded or crowned, you know, like uh, you see on a lot of the Italian knives and uh, just a gorgeous knife. Uh, and he was uh, obliged me when I asked for double edge. He asked me twice. I said, please, please do. Uh, I think he asked him uh, asked me twice just to kind of indemnify himself, if that's the right word. I'm not sure. Uh, next is also A2D, attention to detail. He moved into the uh, frame lock flipper making game. And uh, when he made this one and posted uh, posted it on Instagram, this is, uh, I, I knew I had to have it. I, uh, we glanced in each other's eyes from across the room. I said, oh my gosh, is that a huge micarta inlay, natural tan, you know, canvas micarta. Oh, and on the lock side too. And uh, the Mark One said, yes, yes, I am. And so I reached out uh, eventually after he came on our town hall and I said, uh, you still have that knife? He did. And uh, the rest is history. Now, uh, he has been, uh, Esposito has been riffing on this model for quite some time and does some really, really unique and uh, interesting treatments with the milling on the handles and all sorts of stuff. So definitely check him out. So this is my Greg Lightfoot uh, element uh, designed by Jared Van Otterloo, I think, JVO Designs, and uh, beautifully executed by the legend Mr. Lightfoot himself. It is a beast. It is a thick chunk and fulfills a little bit of that fantasy knife thing for me. It, this, is, uh, uh, this would be a useful knife in a fight for sure. And uh, you could you could definitely make it useful for other things. I just don't carry it much. It is a beast. And, uh, you know, it's kind of an heirloom for me. Heirloom? Maybe not the right word. It's not an heirloom. It's a safe queen, I guess, is more of the word. Uh, but this also fits into the recurve theme of the day. Uh, one of the recurve, you know, recurve tanto. Looks like a shark. And the last one, the one most recent one, the one that uh, showed up on my door Friday morning. The Monkey Thumper by Black Rock Knives and Ken Vihikite, the man who uh, who designs and makes these things. Uh, just, I mean, I've been talking about it since I got it, and uh, I'm blown away by the craftsmanship, but also by the design and the execution. And all of this tooling all over this knife, including on the handle, is unique. So every knife he makes is unique in that regard. Um, it's all handmade. It's stock removal. Uh, G10, this is 5160, high carbon stainless steel. Uh, high carbon steel. Um, I had him double edge this one too. I think he may have asked twice as well. Uh, you've got this really great shaped ring that allows for, if you are into karambit flipping, you can do some really abrupt stops with those angles uh, when you pinch it between your finger and thumb. So uh, little did he know when he made that is that it's actually a very good, uh, very good uh, shape for a karambit if you're going to do that kind of manipulation thing. But also, if you're just going to carry it and hold it like this, which I prefer, actually, uh, you have a great pommel there, a nice pointy pommel down there. So just an outstanding knife, great guy. And um, incidentally, I gave this to a guy at work who uh, who I always have test out knives, uh, either knives that I make or knives that I get, because A, he loves knives, and he's a giant, and I want to see how things fit in his hands, and uh, <laughs> this uh, Black Rock knife fits beautifully in my hand, and uh, also in his giant mitts, so it's interesting when people can uh, can kind of hit that golden, golden ratio there with handles, so uh, what was I going to say about this? Oh, no, I was going to say, uh, you should definitely go to Black underscore rock underscore knives on Instagram and just scroll through it and look at the many beautiful uh, 
shapes. They're they're all aggressive, but they all have this sort of uh, mm, rustic, uh, not rustic. There was a word that he used that was perfect. Uh, but it's like this, they, they remind him and me of like old flint napped tools in a way. They're, they're rugged and, and uh, rugged yet refined. So I, I'm feeling, you know, I have these four in front of me and being an artist myself and making things myself, I am growing more and more interested in, um, I hate this term, but pivoting uh, a little bit more towards custom knives and and supporting directly supporting uh, independent makers who are you know making these these incredible works and supporting themselves and their families on this, and um, and then what do you do? You you benefit from getting this incredible one of a kind piece. Now there's an obvious drawback, which is they are quite expensive, but. If I'm honest with myself, I already spend a lot of money on knives and uh, and I spend a lot, uh, you know, trying to experiment, trying to uh, trying to enjoy and 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 test out everything that appeals to my eye. Well, that's kind of an immature way of looking at it for me. I'm, I'm growing a little bit out of that. Oh, my voice just cracked. This, this is making me nervous. I'm growing out of that a little bit, I think, and I, it's been happening gradually. And the more and more I talk to these people and the more uh, I see who they are and meet meet them and learn who they are and what, what it is to make these things, and I I can relate on a some level, I just, I think I'm going to drift more in that direction. I know I've been saying it uh, a bit, but that does mean, obviously, letting go of some of the things I already like. Uh, that's that's the the whole idea about sacrifice, right? sacrifice things that are valuable to you in the present for a better future or for a, a more optimized future in, in this case. If you're a collector, obviously it's it's a it's a luxury. So refining your luxury, buying the best you can afford, as Grandma T would say. Um, so yeah, that's 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 where I'll leave that. Custom knives, you might see more. You might see more here. Um, but I don't know. And where will you see them? You'll see them here on YouTube. You'll see them here on um, your your podcatcher and uh, and also on Instagram. So so go to all those places if you like looking at knife pictures uh, or knife videos like this and subscribe. Tell your friends about it. Sharing videos is very helpful. Just spread the word. If you think this is good stuff and uh, it, it, it scratches your knife itch, well, then uh, pass it along to a friend. Uh, next. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. We have Knife Life News. <laughs> uh, this week, uh, just one knife, but uh, from a former guest of this show and a, and a, a Polish designer whose knives are just uh, undeniably classy and beautiful. Yes, I'm, I'm speaking of Ostop Hell. Uh, Ostop first bust out onto the scene, at least in 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 my memory, with the Metamorph, uh, the Real Steel Metamorph front flipper, one of the first front flippers uh, I ever, or the first front flipper I ever experienced, but one of the first ones that really popularized uh, the the form or the, the mechanism. Uh, well, he has something new out called the Pier. And if you look at this thing, uh, <laughs> well, you'll, you'll see his inspirations. Well, the Pier is a high-end Wii knife, which is a very exciting thing because uh, if you know the build uh, qualities of Wii knives, you'll know that they're outstanding, way down to the to the cheapest Civivi out there. Uh, but their high-end stuff is dreamy luxury item. You know, I mean, I, I have to be honest when I'm speaking about these things, another luxury item. And here, uh, Ostop Hell was allowed to really, really flex his uh, design prowess uh, because he knew that he had the full uh, the full weight of Wii knives behind him, uh, this being in their top of the line line, and his goal was to emulate the a um, uh, British uh, dueling sword. Is that what he called it? A dueling sword? Well, a, a British uh, era sword, English straight sword. That's what it is, uh, in blade shape, but. He realized that uh, in in listening to his uh, interview on um, Bla uh, Knife News, he said the real issue, real challenge, and a challenge always in designing knives for him is getting as close to a one-to-one -one blade to handle ratio as possible. Obviously, it's not possible to get a one-to-one -one ratio uh, 
because you have the pivot there. The, the handle has to be a little bit longer to accommodate the blade. But knowing design, he, he also realizes that you can change the appearance of the blade to handle ratio in how you design the handle. And uh, this the right behind the flipper uh, on the handle, you'll see that notch cut out, uh, the, the sort of finger groove there. But also the inlay on top has that pinched sort of pattern in it. And uh, Ostop says that, you know, with these kind of little design flourishes, you can make the handle look smaller and make the blade appear longer, which can get you ever closer to your um, to your one to one handle to blade ratio. But it's like the one thing from math in high school. I remember the abscissa uh, that the, the line on the graph that comes ever closer to the to the bottom that my, my father is cringing right now, uh, but never touches because it's always being divided in half. So it never, never, never quite reaches. Anyway, so that's what he kind of uh, uh, approaches with this knife. And I think it's, uh, I think it's really uh, an interesting blend of space age look, but with that uh, sort of rustic texturing on top. Now, what this is, is it's, it's got sort. It's sort of a frame lock, sort of a liner lock. Now that uh, inlay on the top is uh, stretches from the tail end of the handle to the pivot, but you can see behind it the frame is stands quite proud. So it is technically a frame lock with an insert, a steel insert, a titanium frame lock. But it has so much of an inlay on both sides that it, it it has the benefits of a liner lock as well. I would imagine it's easier to flip in that you're not. Uh, pinching it. Sometimes uh, these very slender handled um, frame locks are hard to flip because you can't help but hold in the uh, the the, um, the locking bar in just holding it. So that uh, seems to solve a lot of problems there and um, makes it look quite beautiful, I think. It, it does have the uh, the sort of dueling sword appearance to me, now that I know. If, if I didn't know that was his inspiration, I'd, I'd say, you know, maybe this could be a pocket knife for a um, space force defender or is that what they're calling them defenders weird name by the way it's way too general guardian guardian you know what a sailor is you know what an airman is you know what a marine is you know what a sailor uh, soldier is but guardian I, I think i think we have guardians on our building at work in the office and um you know they carry guns anyway i get off topic here so uh oh stop hell Check out the pure design, premium we. Uh, so I think it's gonna be, I think it's gonna be a thing of beauty. Uh, tell us what you think. Four six six four four eight seven. That's seven two four four six six four four eight seven. And uh, let us know on the listener line what you're thinking. And uh, and well, next let's get to some recurves, shall we? And now that we're caught up with knife life news, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. I, I'm thinking that. Um, that we're going to have to do a couple of little demos here just just to get across what I'm saying because I've talked about recurves ad nauseum for a long time and I can never quite come up with the right words and I and I feel like no one else really can either though a lot of people do it much better than I about the the actual benefits of cutting with a recurve blade and why it's worth the well, just maybe changing your approach to sharpening just a touch or honing or stropping just a touch to uh, get it to work uh, for you when you want to when you want to sharpen or, or hone a recurve. It's not a big deal. So please don't let that stand in your way of the beauty and power of a recurve. Now, I'm going to get up for this because one of the swords you may have noticed is missing off the wall. And that's the sword that started it all for me. Um, with recurves. Let me get some of these custom knives out of the way. And, uh, and I, I will present this, uh, the thing that started it all, my love of recurves right here on the knife cam. So it's pretty big, <laughs> at least bigger than what I usually show here. Uh, but this is the sword that uh, my dad used to have in his office when, uh, when I was growing up. And we would say, Dad, get down the sword. My brother and I, Dad, get down the sword. Because he kept it up on a high shelf. And uh, rarely he did, knowing that uh, delayed reward and delayed gratification would be good for us. Every once in a while, he'd bring it down. And uh, I remember not being able to hold this thing. And what is it? It's a Filipino Taliban. Taliban. 
And you can see, if you put it on one of these uh, straight lines here, you can really see how the blade here, I'm just gonna drag it across that straight line, how the blade curves down. And in, in the angle right here that comes off of the handle, that is where the recurve is. And that's what presents, uh, you wonder what that stain is. And that's what presents that belly and that curve for, uh, for an intense cut and an intense slash. So this is the thing that started it all. Thank you, Dad. Uh, I ended up with this one. Sorry, Vic. And for Christmas this year, uh, everything came full circle because my dad, after seeing the uh, off-grid knives interview, uh, really liked the knives, really liked Carrie, and got this for me for Christmas. And this is the back country. And that is a five inch recurve blade. So I feel like uh, I've gone full circle, you know, this, uh, this childhood love of that big recurve Filipino sword. And now almost 50 years later, uh, I get this beautiful recurve here. So, so these are the two most, uh, this is the most, this is the oldest recurve. And then this is the newest recurve in my collection. They both come from my dad. I've been recently trying to find meaning in everything. I, I don't know why. Uh, but that's meaningful to me. <laughs> so there you have it. So next is uh, the tactical um, folder recurve. Now that's the biggest one for me. That's the one that uh, I have the most involvement with because they're the most carryable, obviously. I'm not walking around with swords and I, I, I don't carry big fixed blades, uh, but I do carry big folders and I love the recurve. And who introduced uh, the recurve concept to me in any case? Uh, Ernest Emerson with the with the commander. Now I'm not saying he invented the folding recurve knife. I'm saying this is the first one that uh, I saw it on um, Knife Center in 1999 and flipped my lid. I was like, oh my god, they're allowed to make a blade shape that cool. And uh, so if you look at this um, and you know what a Emerson commander looks like uh, these days, this has some uh, differences in the blade. Uh, I love that long swedge on top that goes from the the tip all the way up to the um, to the opening thumb stud. So Ernest Emerson ha has designed quite a few of these recurve blades, and um, a number of them, a good number of them, are in the clip point sort of Bowie variation. Uh, this is the Iron Dragon, and this is the one that he designed um, to. Uh, in honor of Richard Bustillo, his uh, Jeet Kune Do and Kali teacher from the uh, Filipino Academy of Martial Arts, I think it was called, Danny Nasanto School. And uh, this one I bought from uh, Alex Tissot. So it was, you know, of course, it's a, it's got a little extra flourish there with this uh, gray, gray precision opening disc. Uh, but if you look at that recurve blade, from the tip looking towards the rest of the knife, you can see that what looks subtle in profile is pretty uh, yeah, pretty extreme when you look at it head on. And that's, that's where you get the cutting power. Um, before I go further, let me kind of give you a demonstration of what I mean. Um, here, I'll do that with, I'm gonna demonstrate why it is very efficient to use a recurve in just in cutting, just in, we'll, we'll just do a draw cut and I'll, that will illustrate to you um, the benefits. All right, so I haven't done this yet and I'm doing this uh, for the first time now. So hopefully, uh, hopefully the, um, the medics standing by are, are ready. Um, so this is a bundle of t-shirts, uh, old kind of nasty t-shirts and, uh, I'm going to show you first, here is a, a Voyager, an, old, um, an older Voyager, and uh, it's, it's got sort of a straight Bowie blade. I'm just gonna pull it across. It's very sharp. All right. I, I mean, okay, so I'll, I'll add a little pressure and get a nice cut in there, because this is definitely capable of cutting these shirts. Okay, and I should be careful. Okay, so I, I, I put a bit of pressure and dragged it across the shirt. And we'll take a look at how deeply it cut. I'm just gonna spread it open with my thumbs here. And I uh, went through about 
It didn't. Okay, so I have a black T-shirt, a gray shirt, T-shirt, a yellow, and a pink T-shirt, all wrapped up. It didn't even go through uh, the the four folded layers of the black T-shirt. Now I'm going to use uh, same company, so kind of the same sh attention to sharpness and edge geometry. I'm going to use this Vaquero Grande, or no, this is just a a Voyager Vaquero, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to cut straight across it, and uh, I want you to see what it does. Okay, so I'm just gonna nestle it right there in that. So this is a rounded surface here, and I'm gonna take that round, that concave surface on the blade and rest it on the rounded surface, kind of as if it were an arm or something. And I'm just gonna pull across. And I don't know if you could see, I mean, I could just see looking at it. It 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 dug right in. Now let's 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 open this up and see how deeply it went. It went all the way to the pink there, all the way to the pink. So that is the best way for me to show you what the benefit is. Here, I'm going to try this again with with uh, with the straight blade, boy, just to make sure I'm giving this Bowie knife its its due, because I don't I don't want to feel like I was cheaping out. And I'm going to push as hard as I can. This is a sharp knife, so we'll open it up. Okay, it broke through the black and got to the gray, but that's nothing like how deeply the recurve cut. Now, so what happens is, and we'll put this on the straight line here on the cutting board. What happens is as you pull it, as you pull the recurve blade through the medium here, you get this, that, that curve there is what accelerates the cut. It bites in deeper, where here it just drags across and is reliant on the downward pressure and the, and the pressure you're putting this way to do all of its cutting. This here, yes, it requires some downward pressure, but just the act of pulling it through sends this, for lack of better term, sharpened hump, uh, digging deeper into the medium. And I I'm saying those words and it sounds like whatever, but really showing it with this t-shirt is the way to go. Now, the last thing I'm gonna show is, uh, I haven't done this, this yet either. I wanna see how the Chris does. Uh, uh, the uh, well, we'll get to that in a second because I want to I want to run through these uh, these different types of recurves. So here that these are the cold steel vaquero style uh, recurves. Now, if you look at these, they have extremely deep recurves, and that's why I used uh, the uh, this vaquero to show that and to demonstrate that because it. It's sort of a cartoonish version of a recurve. It's so it's so extreme. Um, these sort of more tactical recurves, like like on this CQC15, are way more subtle, and will do a lot of damage naturally or do do a, a very deep cut. But these things approach kukri, and so I wanted to show that uh, demonstration with these just to uh, highlight it. So this is the Vaquero Grande. This was their first six inch knife. By they, I mean cold steel, quite obviously. And uh, as you can see, they all had um, the serrations. This thing is 25 years old or so, something like that. And it's been used a lot. I used to carry it around with me like this was my EDC. Um, <laughs> when I was living in New York, which New York City, which is just crazy now. I just, I shudder at the thought that I actually carried this around New York City because if I got pinched with this, I'd be, I'd still be there. <laughs> uh, but uh, this thing, the the serrations on it, just amazing, amazing. We'll, we'll chew through anything. You've got four tiny teeth and then one sharpened, scooped out portion there. And uh, the cold steel serrations are just, Awesome. I don't think they look as cool. I got to say, I got to be totally honest. They don't appeal to the eye as much as the serrations that uh, say Spyderco does or Emerson, but they, uh, I think they work in a superior fashion. So yeah, I, I had the, uh, had the grande and then they came out with the El Hombre and I was like, Ooh, so that is a recurve I could carry in my pocket. So this was the first one, the first recurve knife I carried when I carried this every day for several years. Uh, when I got it um, in the 90s at some point, late-ish. And uh, they don't do this much anymore, but look at the jimping on the back of this handle. 
if you're listening, the jimping are these uh, semicircular scoops cut out, um, but they alternate and uh, and they give you grip from the top. Uh, in a, in a way, it looks like file work more than jimping. Uh, but I really like that. It's a classy touch visually, but also it works very well, very well. And then you can see subtle differences between the old Vaquero series and then the Voyager Vaquero models. They changed up the blade a little bit, made it a little less sinuous, fattened it up a bit. And, and instead of making the whole blade dip down, they widened the belly a bit. And uh, it is still an incredibly powerful cutter um, and, uh, and and quite fetching. To me, this was the first thing they put out that looked anything like a Navaja. Of course, now they have the Espada series, which is, you know, which look exactly like Navajas. Uh, so this is the OS 8 version. And believe it or not, even in OS 8, it still performs. Imagine that. So, uh, and you know, Cold Steel does a great job with their AUS steels. And then the Signature Series, Lynn Thompson sign Signature Series Large Voyager Vaquero. Now this thing is in XHP steel with that nice olive drab grivery. And then I have a Snaggletooth MF pocket deployer on this one. Um, this is a great knife to take to the park. This is what I take when I take the girls to the park. This is one that comes with me quite a bit. Um, because, well, because it's it gives me uh, it, it's reassuring, I guess. But also, uh, it's it's fun to use to like knock down. Um, I don't know if we're doing something, we're pretending to be uh, pretending to be bush people or whatever. You can ha hack down a lot of uh, vegetation with this, with those uh, XHP serrations. So that is the the Vaquero style. It's kind of an extreme deep recurve. Now, of course, we're just going from knives in my collection. And I don't have a huge collection of recurves, but I, I see types emerging. And uh, so, so it's the the EDC kind of tactical. Um, it's the it's the deep deep recurve. And then next we're going to get to the Kukri and then the Chris. And these are all different forms of recurve. Uh, incidentally, a cool thing about the cold steel knives is that they allow you to shut them one handed. They're, they are fidgety. They're the they are the one fidgety uh, sort of backlock because they give you a, a generous ricasso there. You can just kind of drop it on your finger and close it one-handed. So don't let the, the backlock slash triad lock thing uh, turn you off if it's not fidgety enough for you. You can still close it one-handed. And uh, actually, a lot of their recent models, not for nothing, you can, you can flick open with your thumb just like it was uh, a real fidgety blade. Okay, next, the Kukri. Mm -mm -mm. The Kukri. I was talking about tactical folders, and uh, I didn't show this one because it's in the Kukri section. But uh, if you follow this show at all, you know that I'm obsessed with this knife. This is my Christmas knife for my wife, a Jason Knight designed fox knife uh, called the MK Ultra, available only at tacticalelements.com. Uh, got that beautiful micarta handle. I love this uh, micarta the Fox in particular uses. Uh, I've seen it on a couple other knives and titanium. Beautiful, but look at that recurve. Look at that thing. I mean, yes, it's a kukri, so it's 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 uh, the curve is built in. I mean, this thing is just one continuous curve. If you look at the spine, uh, but. In the blade itself, you see a recurve. So it's not just this overall silhouette of the thing. It's the blade itself. You have that. Here's a Raja. I have a couple of fixed fixed uh, Kukris. I'm not pulling them out right now. The Raja, and then you have the, the Spartan. Now, the Spartan is... Uh, I, I'm putting it in the Kukri category because it's it's like a Falcata, the, um, which is a... It was an Iberian, a sword from the Iberian Peninsula that the Romans adopted once they conquered that area and then used for a long time. And I think, wait, I might be, I know Alexander the Great, I know the Macedonians uh, or Macedonians used, uh, used Falcatas also. So I'm actually, now I'm unsure of the, of the, of the origin of this, but 
so either oh geez so but the kukri itself is is from india and uh <laughs> um i'm messing up my history now but the i do know that this spartan blade is based on the the uh the copus which came from the falcata or the or the copus which led to the falcata there now that you're totally confused uh super recurve there deep choppy recurve that's why i put this in the kukri category because kukris are front heavy blades there uh, you have the you have the deep recurve of this uh, vaquero but look at look at the point not only is the point more center line with the handle but uh, it's slender and and uh, not as weighty up front the kukri for its uh, efficiency relies not only on the recurve but the weight towards the front so this is another type of uh, kukri that you, or another type of recurve that you can carry and incorporate into your life uh, and get maximum utility out of because you have not only chopping capability and of course light chopping because it's a folder but you also have that pull through cutting and slashing ability uh, if that you know is part of your day Incidentally, this Raja was a, a, a home a housewarming gift from my brother when we moved into this house 10 years ago. And uh, yeah, it's been on patrol <laughs> through the house late night many a time. Uh, it took me a few years of not living in the middle of a bustling city and living in the quiet suburbs to feel like every little noise wasn't someone trying to break in and steal my stuff and hurt my people. So yeah, this, this went on patrol quite a bit. So the kukri, kukri, kukri. You've got you've got all that weight up front. You've got the deep, deep recurve, and uh, so you've got you've got both the slashing and the pull cutting. But you have chopping because of all that weight up front. Now the one thing uh, people turn their you know look look at a kukri sideways for is the thrusting. But all you got to do is think about it for an instant, practice it a little bit, and you can thrust with the kukri, no problem. Some angles might be more difficult, uh, but you know. You got to adapt your techniques. So lastly, lastly, we're going to talk about the multi-recurve. And that is the Chris. The Chris has a number of recurves. And uh, a lot of people think it's just a mall ninja design, but it's a real thing. It's a, you saw what the recurve just did to the t-shirts. Now this is one, two, three of them doing it. So I'm going to do a little demo with the Chris. I've never done this. Um, so I want to see what happens. Here are here are our uh, cut results. That is the the vaquero, very deep through many layers of t-shirt, down to the bottom t-shirt, which is pink, and kind of looks white in this because of the light. Uh, here is the straight bladed uh, Bowie knife, and pulled across uh, twice, and with maximum force, it went through one t-shirt. And, and I'll tell you, these are all very sharp and thinly ground cold steels I'm, I'm, I'm using to test. Uh, this is not 100% scientific, as you can tell, but, you know, what can I say? When that grant comes through. Okay, so now we're going to try it with the Chris. Now, let me find a spot here. I'll find a spot here that hasn't been compromised. Uh, and I will I will pull this through, making sure not to cut myself. Okay, so when you do this, you get one, two, and then you get that third sort of hooking parting cut. So let's see what that did. Let's see. Uh, about as deep as the Vaquero. About as deep as the Vaquero. Went all the way to the pink. And let's see. Uh, yeah, it went uh, about, as, about as deep. So with this Kukri, I mean, with this, um, with this Chris, you get... Now imagine slashing with this. Imagine swiping across a surface with that. It's like a bread knife, you know? It's like a big bread knife just gliding through and 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 forcing an accelerated cut uh, every two inches here and then ending with a nasty little tip cut. So do you consider this a recurve? Am I stretching it? Is, am I pushing it? Is a Chris just a totally different animal? It is also incidentally, or I guess it's not incidentally, it is also designed to be 
uh, really devastating on a thrust too, because as the blade widens and the curves widen, uh, you know, it just creates a very large, uh, nasty sort of hole. Uh, is the Chris useful in everyday carry, everyday life? Um, sure. You know, if you have friends <laughs> that you like to one up, uh, for sure. Uh, you know, yeah, you, you can use it. You can carry it and use it and you can use it to cut stuff, but it is really actually, uh, of all of these, the most a weapon. And, and what I mean by that is it is the least flexible into other, um, other uses in my, in my humble opinion. I think, uh, I think the Chris is kind of all weapon. The Kukri is, is weapon and tool. Uh, the deep recurve, uh, Vaqueros, same thing. The EDC, same thing. That Filipino sword my dad gave me. Well, that probably started as a tool, right? Probably a field implement. Someone's uh, someone's living, but also their their survival and protection. So the recurve, don't shy away from it. One last thing I want to talk about before I finish uh, chewing your ear off about the recurve is that it's not that bad to sharpen or to keep sharp. Let's let's put it that way to keep sharp. And what I mean by that is, um, well, I'm going to be using the Spyderco Sharp Maker and and also just a regular kitchen steel, which I want to Greek in as a um, a rounded porcelain or or stone. Um, so I wouldn't I wouldn't actually use a, a regular kitchen knife steel, but it's not going to it's not going to damage anything. Um, let's see. So I'm going to show you. It's not something to be afraid of. So here is the Spyderco Triangle Sharp Maker called so because the stones are triangular. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with this tool, uh, I, Rob Bixby would say it's not a sharpener, it's a honer. It's something to, to keep keep what you have sharp, sharp, but not something you want to put a fresh edge on. And I, I think I would uh, agree with him on that. But you have two different angles here. And um, I only ever use the edge angle. So if you look at this, uh, the main problem with with a flat stone, uh, with a recurve, um, I'll use I'll use a different knife. Is that going over a flat stone? You have those. You have to accommodate for that curve every time, and that can be difficult, especially on a flat stone that's wide coming into this area. Um, really, if you get a sharp one already, uh, you can just use the sharp maker to keep it honed. What you want to use is the corner. Now the corner here will always fit into the curve. And the reason is it's so narrow. The problem is really broad stones. Coming down like this on a really broad stone, you're going to flatten out your recurve if you don't if you don't perfectly accommodate for it. With something as narrow as a, the the uh, apex of a triangle like that or the corner of a triangle is that it's a very, very, very small surface touching the blade at one time. Uh, but it is touching the, the full length of the, of the recurve and it's not flattening, it's not favoring any one part of the blade uh, because of its flatness. So the acuteness of the, uh, of the corner of one of these triangle stones is, is how I keep these things sharp. Now I said, if you already get a sharp one, that's actually not a very fair characterization because this thing I used and abused and it was dull as hell. And I put, I used the, um, the diamond stones on this and then the medium stones and then the fine stones and then these extra fine stones. And this thing is incredibly sharp now. Now this is OS 8 and it's easy to sharpen because it's a relatively uh, soft steel. I don't know if you've had the same um, results on the Spyderco Sharp Maker with those four, uh, those four stone with a really, really hard steel. I, I'm not sure. I, something makes me doubt it. But... Besides the Spyderco Sharp Maker or some very triangular, uh, uh, some sort of a very acute sharpening surface that you can sharpen this on, also rounded surfaces. This is a, just a kitchen steel from our kitchen, um, Shun knife set. And it, it basically does the same thing. Uh, now, like I said before, Ideally, it's not a kitchen steel. Ideally, it's a ceramic stone, um, you know, made for sharpening knives. Um, you know, this is this is meant to to uh, sort of straighten out the the teeth. 
But with a rounded stone or a triangular stone, you can get and keep an edge on these recurved knives. Who out there is sharpening with really wide flat stones? The people who are great sharpeners, your uh, your Neves, etc. Uh, but most of us uh, don't sharpen that way. So I, I urge you to <clears throat> I urge you to 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 check out a recurve, um, especially if you're someone who's shied away from them from the reasons I've uh, for the reasons I mentioned before. And just check it out. And if you have a problem sharpening it, or if it's a buzz kill or whatever, get rid of the thing. But but really don't let the sharpening and the honing uh, hold you back. Now, stropping is the same thing. Oh boy, I left my strop elsewhere, but I'm gonna use the, the top of this to show you. Stropping is the same thing. What I end up doing on my strop, which is shaped much like this, is I favor one side of the strop. And so, let's see, it, it looks like this in cross section, like it's coming to the strop at an angle. And you can flatten that angle quite a bit, but you want to, you don't want to approach the uh, the strop in a totally flat way because of that curve. You'll be doing the same thing. You'll be favoring just the belly. So make sure you kind of come to the edge of the strop with the recurve and you'll be able to keep it nice and honed. All right, I've said recurve, recurve, recurve a thousand times and, and now I just, uh, I feel like I'm just, uh, talking into the wind. So I think I'm going to wrap it up there, but I, 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 uh, well, anyway, I'm going to wrap it up there and let you know, I have another recurve on the way. Uh, that's what kind of got me thinking about it, but I'm going to keep that one under wraps until it arrives. Um, until then, I hope you all have a, a wonderful, wonderful week. Let me know if you think recurves are worth it. Do you think a Chris is a recurve? Uh, do you carry a recurve? And if so, what type is it? Um, yeah, I, I like to know this stuff. To me, that's why I come here. I come here because I can't talk like this with my wife for, <laughs> for an hour. I, I can't talk like this with anyone I know for an hour. So I rely on you, <laughs> our listeners and viewers. Thank you so much for coming and joining us on the Knife Junkie podcast. Uh, this, is, this has been great. Uh, look out for us tomorrow, Thursday Night Knives, and next Sunday for our interview with, I won't tell you who, but I mentioned his name earlier. And... Uh, and we'll see you then. So for Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I am Bob DeMarco saying, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Podcast.